And here we come to the point of discussion where I express how likely I believe, and through my research, I believe the Sasquatch to exist. And for that, we have to explore about further about what it is, what it could be, the possibilities. So let's take a look at that. According to one researcher, there were two types of Bigfoot making up four total subspecies. Another researcher says there's 12 species just in the US. This topic is deep though, because it doesn't only question whether this creature exists, it also questions our creation, our own evolution or mutations that happened along the way. I always found the small face compared to the large head fascinating. It brings up to mind the elongated skulls, aliens, and Crowleys, Aleister Crowleys, the famous dark mystics, entity drawing. It also reminds me of Boscop Man, which is said to be a variation of anatomically modern humans, yet there still seems to be much mystery about it. And more, plus the telepathic or psychic abilities make for a really fascinating tale or tall tale. Maybe Lloyd Pye was right. The reason we can't find these things is because they're actually avoiding contact with us, and their habitat is exclusive and brutal to us. The panda and gorilla eluded science for years simply because their habitat is deep and difficult for us to get to. As Pye said, pandas are as stupid as a bag of hammers. They can't even find each other in captivity to breed. So now imagine an animal that not only has a deeply inaccessible habitation, but is also active avoiding us. Now there's another panda example that only helps to disprove the whole Bigfoot phenomenon. In 1979, a zoo in Holland was to display a new panda cub, but before they could show it to the public, it escaped. Two hours later, its dead body was found, but not until two days later was this reported to the public in the news. Within those two days, over a thousand phone calls were received about baby panda sightings. This is actually evidence that all sightings of a kind can actually be wrong, no matter how big that number may be. A true myth can be started simply with a story, a strong story, and that story will always garnish so-called evidence, because the story itself impacts the imagination to a point of delusion taking grasp of one's perception. If I were to make up a ridiculous pink monster living in a particular area and share that even with my small audience here and try to prove it with some blurry photos, reports would surely start coming in of evidence or sightings of this creature. For every single pink hint of pink that people would see in that area in their peripheral vision would be assumed to be this creature. So again, what could it be? China has a golden monkey that a certain species or subspecies of the golden monkey that can grow up to five feet, if I'm not wrong. And orangutans did once inhabit China. Are these the Yeti? And there's more evidence of how easy it is for animals to avoid us. This time I call upon the billy apes, which proved how easy it is for an animal to avoid human detection in their environment. And locals did know of them for years. So not only these primates and pandas could avoid us, but a well-trained human as well. They could avoid exposure to humanity for their entire life if they wanted to. Considering if Sasquatch were to be real, there's a good chance they'd be more intelligent than, say, pandas or billy apes, and maybe even the same level as humans or even of higher intelligence facial structure and comparing to other monkeys. One scientist speculates that an unhooded nose, such as those of many primates, this kind of nose anatomy can't be likely on a creature such as Sasquatch, as he believes that creatures with unhooded noses cannot survive cold climates and would freeze, or would have to migrate far to where there's high humidity and more warmth. Another gentleman I stumbled upon on YouTube was talking about the relationship and behavior between Sasquatch and autistic people, as well as gorillas, uh, having a similarity in their behavior by being visual thinkers and also having a weak sort of ability to communicate. And again, there are those speculations that they are more advanced than this. Ron Lewis said that he'd found a grave. And at the end of the day, when he was working on the grave and trying to dig out the corpse, that night he was visited at home in his bedroom by a Sasquatch apparition, which told him to leave the grave alone. And Ron did in fact show researcher Tom Powell where that location is of that grave. He never touched it again. So that was just digging deeper into what the Sasquatch may be. Now let's take a look at all the possibilities, and this is one of my favorite parts of these this series videos is looking at all the possibilities of what this could be and we'll examine most if not all of it well is it possible to look at all the possibilities 
Let me know if you think of some below. Very generally speaking, there are two types of researchers of Sasquatch. Some that see it as an animal relating to biology as we know it and understand it, and then there's others that relate Sasquatch to alien and being somewhat metaphysical in nature and substance. I agree with how Tom Powell put it. Approach the research of Sasquatch in your own way and method, but in the end, let's get together and share notes. First, we've got to mention Gigantopithecus blackii. That's its Latin name, and it's the largest reported primate to have ever existed. And looking at its anatomy, it's basically the same as a gorilla's, just bigger as a lot of creatures at that time were, so there's that theory that says that Sasquatch could be related, or could be a Gigantopithecus. Proving by looking at the footprints, we see that it's not because Gigantopithecus would have the footprints of today's gorillas, more or less, just larger. If it in any way relates with the Gigantopithecus, I would say that the Sasquatch is a descendant or evolutionary descendant of the Gigantopithecus. One evolutionary branch went from a certain primate to possibly humans, and another their evolutionary branch went from Gigantopithecus to the Sasquatch we talk about today. Again, just possibilities. It has also been observed that if Sasquatch is a transitional to human being, basically the missing link we've been searching for, it would need a lot more sapien or humanoid attributes. Then there's this theory that they are Pleistocene homos, which could mean that Sasquatch is a different variation to us, but of the same type, just as we see in dogs. We have some something like a Chihuahua, which is very much differently structured than, let's say, a Great Dane. We also have the Old World Monkeys comparing to the New World Monkeys. Maybe Sasquatch is an Old World Human and we're the New World Humans. Are all the Sasquatch-type creatures planet-wide related, or are even those really different from one another? Let's quickly jump through even more theories. It could be a bear or other large animal native to the area. It's very possible for bear footprints to be mistaken. Exaggerations, and I find this one to be an important one, and probably very common among the sighting or the reports, because I've seen people myself describe a snake and they stretch out their arms completely like it's one or two meters, but in reality, when I find the snake, it's only that big. And that's what happens when people don't have enough experience or knowledge of the wilderness around us. So it could be exaggerations of some natural tree or rock formations they saw, or possibly bears or dogs, or even moose young. We go back to the whole missing link idea. Bigfoot being the actual missing link, or Bigfoot being a Neanderthal. Years back, Lucy was supposed to be a big or part of a big the big answer to the missing link but now a lot of people see it as a hoax and saying that the bone structure is actually too robust and that the way they show lucy is they try to humanize her whereas she would be walking more like a gorilla and covered in more fur. That's another thing to keep in mind. There's always sort of different agendas behind Discovery too. Then there's the whole alien concept. We see so many sightings of UFOs that correspond with Bigfoot sightings within the same area and time. Or maybe the Sasquatch is a product, a creation of an alien species for labor, for minerals, or for searching for gold. Seeing as how Bigfoot appeared in a bedroom at night, maybe it's an alien itself, or a hybrid being of some sort. Maybe a a combination of us and alien. And that takes us to the spiritual metaphysical beings kind of theory. As many believe the Sasquatch to be spiritual keepers of the earth. They say that the star people seeded them here before they seeded us. Star people, of course, being the aliens or extraterrestrials. Sasquatch could be a shapeshifter, just like the lizard people shapeshifters. These could be shapeshifters as well. But maybe not even of some elite agendas like that, but of Native Americans, such as when we think of skinwalkers. And with shapeshifting, we have to mention the men in black again. Maybe the men in black, whatever they are, they can shapeshift into Bigfoot to survive within the forests and in their men in black form in our cities. There's that possibility of being a human, basically, as mentioned before. For Homo sapien, just of a different mutation or evolutionary branch, a lost tribe that developed a much different look from mutations from inbreeding over generations, a different type of hominid or humanoid, interdimensional beings, considering the report where it stepped through a shimmering portal. Maybe it was going into a different time. Maybe they're time travelers. The 
They could be deities or tree spirits. We have the Green Man from Europe, which is somewhat of a god of the forest. In Native American lore, the Hairy Man helped to create humanity. There's a tiny theory out there of them being plant people, like orcs. As we mentioned before with shapeshifters, it could be shamans or witches. Basically hermits living out wildly in the wild and covering their bodies with outfits or just furs or even costumes to scare other people away. And of course we can't forget demons or jinn. We have heard those reports of that sulfur and musky smell related to the undergrounds and hell. Sasquatch could be the product of an MK Ultra experiment or just human experiments in general. It could have been released into the wilderness and observed on its survival capabilities. We come back to the giants idea that we mentioned in the history portion and there's stories worldwide that support giant lore and we have to mention the Nephilim again or the Sasquatch being products creations of the Nephilim and as far as that goes there's a lot more research and stuff you can get into about that also there's a theory that Sasquatch could just be a blurry being okay that's a joke I had to fit that in there it's getting too serious there's the Mormon Cain theory. Of course, Mormons seem to have the answer to everything, just as they do to who and what Quetzalcoatl was, the ancient Maya god. And as far as Bigfoot goes, that Bigfoot is Cain. But after having a mark placed by God on him that made him scary yet safe from being killed. And it is Cain who people mistaken as some strange creature phenomena. The idea of Bigfoot being a ghost or possibly undead spirits of humans or other beings or other great greater beings, and the last sort of possibility, Bigfoot being the part of a major covert knowledge that is constantly hidden, government agents clearing out areas of evidence, hence the men in black appearances. Wait, is that even a theory or isn't that true? 